Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. So today we're going to look at how circadian clock defects cause disease. So in a previous video I introduced to you the circadian rhythm and I talked about the clock of health and the clock of disease and I'll put the link to that video in the description. But in this video we'll look at some specific examples that show the correlation of the circadian clock to different diseases. So firstly we'll look at the link to cancer and then we'll look at a genetic condition referred to as FAST. So before I jump straight in it's important to recap what the three main clocks are. So firstly we have the, the sun, the light dark cycle that is one of the clocks we live by. Secondly it's our intrinsic circadian clock but lastly and important for this video is the social clock and how we often live our lives um, while we are out late at night and this is in conditions with artificial lighting which kind of antagonises the other clocks and this can be referred to as social jet lag. And so to be really crude and to make this sound oversimplified, we can think that if these three clocks are aligned with each other, they are going to be constructive in terms of their interference. And so this is also referred to as circadian consonants. However, if these clocks are out of line with each other, they're out of sync, it can cause disease, or that's so, so it's thought to. And this can also be referred to as circadian dissonance. And so in this video, we'll look at a couple of examples that try to understand how and why this might be the case. So first up, we'll look at the link to cancer. So there's a lot of accumulating evidence now that shift workers are more prone to cancer, but why would this be the case? So let's just quickly recap about what the circadian rhythm actually is. So the circadian rhythm includes cycles in behaviour, physiology, metabolism and cell activity that fluctuates on around a 24 hour timescale, hence the name circa diem being about a day. So I guess the issue with shift work is that it goes against what we refer to as being the clock of health, that during different times of the day different processes are occurring, for example the secretion of melatonin in the evening that will promote sleep, whereas shift workers are active and working during this time period. But what effect could this have on the body to contribute to increasing their risk for cancer? How could shift work be having an impact? So a key readout for a healthy circadian clock is gene expression patterns. And so part of gene expression patterns is governed by the epigenetic state of a cell. We touched on this last time, I'll put the link to the description in the video, of how the key clock factors, the transcription factors, that actually regulate gene expression. And so this one study looked at the epigenome of shift workers of females in Denmark and what they saw was that these shift workers had differences in their epigenetic marks and this can therefore alter the expression levels of certain genes. So importantly they noticed differences in the methylation, a form of epigenetic marks, on cancer related genes. And whilst these are still just correlations, it is important information to try and understand because potentially we could use this information to cope or to try and alter the disturbances that are caused by shift work. But what about shift work that causes circadian dissonance? So while circadian rhythms are intrinsic to a cell, in multicellular organisms like ourselves, each cell needs to kind of coordinate with each other. So this is achieved by the so-called conductor of the circadian rhythms and this is found in the hypothalamus of the brain, the suprachiasmatic nucleus or the SEN and so it's the presence of light in the morning that starts the circadian rhythm in the hypothalamus or the SEN and this kind of kickstarts the rhythm and helps to coordinate all of the different rhythms in the different tissues of the body. And so this light signal isn't restricted to sunlight, this is indicative of blue light that stimulates this event and so artificial light can have a similar impact and hence shift work by going against the uh, night time by having artificial light can kickstart the rhythm at the wrong time of the day. So that was a brief intro into a link between circadian rhythm disruption and cancer. Now we'll look at a genetic condition that is caused by having a defect in the circadian clock. So the example we'll look at is the familial advanced sleep phase syndrome, otherwise referred to as FASPs. So anything that is familial is an event that kind of runs within a family 
and in this case this is because of a genetic mutation that can be inherited down the generations and so also given by the name FASPS is an advanced sleep phase syndrome so what this means is that the circadian rhythm is advancing at a faster rate than what it should normally do so whilst the rhythm should be around 24 hours people who have FASPS have a circadian rhythm that lasts around 22 hours but how does this happen and why is this the case? So one of the reasons that FASPS is referred to as a disease is due to the fact that whilst they have an around 22 hour rhythm everything else like the sun sets and the daily cycle on earth is still 24 hours and so one of the key events as we already mentioned is about sunlight kickstarting the rhythm in the SCN every day and so anything that kind of it holds or entrains the cycle is referred to as a sight giver and so this still event occurs even with people who have FASPs but it's going to have the effect of causing some circadian dissonance. So what controls the phase length of the circadian rhythm? So one of the key mechanisms to control the length of the cycle is the transcription translation feedback loop which we looked at before and two key proteins in regulating this process are cryptochrome and periods. And it is the regulation of the synthesis and degradation of these proteins that helps to control and maintain the 24 hour rhythm. However, in FASPs, there is a mutation that is commonly seen in the PER2 gene. And this mutation is a serine amino acid that causes it to instead code for a glycine amino acid. And the effect of this mutation results in a loss of a phosphorylation site. And so phosphorylation of the period protein is important for regulating its degradation. So by losing this phosphorylation site, the pair protein is degraded in a shorter time period and this has the impact of advancing the circadian rhythm. So although the degradation of cryptochrome remains the same, the effect of the phosphorylation change on the period protein has the governing impact of advancing the rates of the circadian rhythm to around 22 hours. So we have literally scratched the surface on the amount of literature there is on this topic but if you do want to find out more information let me know and I can also make some more videos on it or you can research it yourself there's just so much information online about it. But hopefully this video has given you an introduction at least to what is out there and how circadian clock defects can cause disease.